In this video, we are going to discuss mixed combinations and permutations. Mixed combinations and permutations refer to problems that might have you do either one. It might be a permutation problem. It might be a combination problem. We know in the last few assignments that we had, well, for example, in the permutation section, every single problem was done on permutations. That's a big clue as to how you're going to do it. Same piece. When we were doing the combination section, every single thing was a combination. You know what formula you're going to start off with. Our work today is pretty much just a com uh, combining those last two things. But the big difference is, you won't know right off the bat, is this a permutation or is this a combination? That's our first learning objective. You will have to read through the problem and determine whether or not the situation is a permutation or a combination. Do you remember the important characteristic? Does order matter? If order matters, it's combination, it's, I'm sorry, if order matters, it's a permutation. If order does not matter, it's a combination. That's going to be our huge clue that we're going to be looking at every single time. We'll also have some problems that are doing compound, compounded pieces where we will have, might have to do two combinations or two permutations. In those situations, our big clue is going to be the word and or the word or. That will provide us clues with how to address them. To begin, consider this problem. You should pause the video, take a chance, take a moment, take a minute to try to get the answer. Mackenzie has 12 cans of Pepsi to give out. Eight people are allowed to come up and pick what they want. And how many different ways can those people come and pick up their pop? Well, in class, people quickly recognized 12 and 8. But there was an initial question as to whether or not we should be using the combinations formula for 12P8, or 12 pick 8, or whether or not we should be using the C for choose. This is our first piece that we have to come up and decide. Now, Ian was asking, don't you just use the 12? Yes. In both formulas, permutation and combination, you will have 12 factorial in the numerator. That part is the same for both problems. Furthermore, in both problems, permutations and combinations, in both of them, you still have to take the subtraction. 12 subtract 8 would give you 4 factorial. That is in both of them. If this is a permutation problem, there's nothing else. It's just 12 factorial over 4 factorial. But combination problems have the additional piece where you reuse the 8. So for a combination, the bottom, 8 and 4, will add up to give you the one on the top if it's a combination problem. Well, this is our first piece that we have to figure out. We have these two pieces that this might be a permutation problem, it might be a combination problem. We have to start this by asking the question that we always check for combinations and permutations. Is it important who goes up first and who goes up second and third? Go ahead, Garrett. Why is it important who goes first, second, third? Now, when we read through this problem, when we're reading through this problem, we're seeing 12 cans of Pepsi. That means all 12 cans are exactly the same. You know, it's like you go to the store, you buy a 12-pack, and you start giving them out. Does it matter who gets the first can out of the box? No, because everybody is getting the same thing anyhow. Because everybody gets the same, that's the clue that the order does not matter for this problem. Because the order does not matter, that's what tells us it's combinations. 
we do not use the permutation formula because it's not a permutation problem. With the correct formula set up now, we will have to go through, crunch the numbers, and see what we actually wind up getting. We know we would have 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, looking at it now, which pieces will cancel? 8 through 1. 8 through 1? Anything else? Well, here are some other pieces we could find. Four times three does equal twelve, so that'll cancel for us. Okay, we could continue it. Eleven times ten times nine. Nine hundred ninety for the numerator. Two times one for the denominator. So to finish this one off, nine hundred ninety divided by two. Four hundred ninety five. And so we have four hundred ninety five different ways that we could have people come up and grab a pop. Please remember that we could use a calculator. And I am using the web-based calculator to simply go 12, choose, since it's a combination problem, we're using the NCR button, 4, 495, we've verified our answer is correct. That particular problem is a nice way to look at the first learning objective. Is this a permutation or a combination problem? We do need to go further and see our second learning objective with the implications for the word and as well as the implications for the word or. Our next couple examples will help us out with that. Take a moment, pause the video, write down the problem if you need for it, need it for your notes. In our first example, here we go. In how many ways can a committee of three people be chosen if there are six men and eight women available and we require that one man and two women be on the committee? This is a problem that kind of sort of combines the fundamental counting principle with permutations. Whenever you have a word like this for and, and problems are multiplying problems. Because what we have available are we have to pick one guy. There's one man to pick out of a group of six men. But we also have the and part that we need to pick two women from a group of eight women. We need both of these pieces to be true. Well, we will have a situation then where from a group of six, we're taking one. We will also have from a group of eight women, we're taking two. The question, though, are we picking them where the order matters, or are we choosing them where the order does not matter? Ian said choosing. You're absolutely correct. Why is it that the order does not matter? because it's a committee of three people. Is there anything that says president, vice president, secretary? Is there anything that says they have 
specific positions? No, it just says three people are getting picked to talk to each other. And if you're just going to put three people in a room to talk with each other, it doesn't matter who goes in the room first. Because it's a committee, that's what tells us it's a combinations problem with the C. Because we are picking the men, that's how we got six choose one. Six men are available, but only one of them is getting picked. Eight women are available, but only two of them are getting picked. That's why we have the two choosing formulas, the two combination formulas for the individual groups. Because we have this word and saying we need them both, that tells us we're going to multiply those two things together. So, let's start expanding this. Six choose one. How does it get written out? Six minus one is five. Bring over the other one. We also need the other combination formula. Eight in the numerator. 8 subtract 2 gives us 6, and 2 factorial for the other part. If we need to do this by hand, we can completely and totally expand this. So I'll scroll down a little bit, and we'll start expanding it. 6 factorial. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 1 factorial is just 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And on the other side, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 1. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And so we have this really, really far expanded out. Which pieces will cancel? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So what are we left with now? 6 over 1. 8 times 7 gives us 56, 2 times 1, and we're left with a multiplying fractions problem. Straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Bottom one is 2. 6 times 56, 336, and 336 divided by 2 equals 168. Doing this problem by hand, we obtain the solution, or we obtain our answer. <coughs> there are <coughs> 168 different ways that we could pick the people to form this committee. It would be kind of nice to verify our answer, especially with the calculator that we know is so incredibly fast. We could use the calculator and just plug in the piece that we identified right away at the beginning. 6 choose 1 multiplied by 8 choose 2. So 6 NCR 1 times 8 NCR 2. And this is getting, OK. This, I have to back it up because I thought that there was an auto formatting in this calculator. It's not. So I've got to do it like this way. 8, 4, there. I'm sorry, 8, 2. We're only picking two people. I thought that this calculator had the same style programming as the, uh, the iPhone calculators or the iPod calculators. It actually doesn't. That's why I had to backtrack and rewrite it, typing it in so that it looks like this. But hit enter, and we've got it. 168 matches what we had.
further evidence that we were correct. For these particular problems, we're not so concerned that you're doing all of the scratch work by hand. The major features behind these learning objectives are can you determine if it's a permutation or a combination? Well, setting it up like this in the green box, writing down the C, is the evidence that you correctly identified it's a combination. The other part was understanding the difference between the word and versus the word or recognizing that it had to be a multiplication problem because of the word and is the evidence that you did that part correctly. For these learning objectives, there's nothing there that says we have to do all the long way by hand. It's completely acceptable for these learning objectives to do the calculator. Writing down the piece in the green box is what's most important because that is your evidence that you know how to do these particular skills. We've already had the do it the long way by hand learning objective. That's not the purpose here. <coughs> here is a similar example. In how many different ways could you pick a committee of four people if there are seven men available and there are seven women available, but this time we have to have it be even. Two men get picked, two women get picked. Take a moment, pause the video, try out this problem on your own. All right, so let's run through the problem. We're picking a committee of four people. There is no order to the committee. There's not a president, vice president like last time. So this is an indicator that we are doing choosing, not picking for a permutation. This is another combination problem. The order in which people are chosen does not matter. Is not. The order in which people are chosen does not matter. I think I said is not matter. Okay, so we have to pick the guys that are going to be on there. How many guys are available? We have seven available. Two are getting picked. This is for the men. What about the women? Okay, seven are available. We're choosing two of them. Turns out in this one, it's a pretty balanced piece. Both of them had seven available. Both of them are getting chosen with two. Well, let's run through the formula then. This would be seven factorial. and 7 factorial over there. And absolutely, it's completely correct. We could go through and do this entire thing over. We could do the completely expanded version. It's absolutely correct. I don't want to do all that work, though. I'm going to go use the calculator. With the piece written in blue, we've already shown that we've met these learning objectives. So let's go use the calculator and say, 7, choose 2, multiplied by 7, comma, 2, noting the same piece that we had for our formula, hit equals, and we get the answer 441. We're done. The piece that I'm circling in yellow, that's everything you would need for that problem. You're completely and totally done. The piece written in blue shows that you know how to identify it's a combination problem because you have the written C. It also shows you understand the different what this word and means because you've put in the multiplication. Let's consider another problem. <coughs> in how many wags? I'm sorry, I have a typo there. And how many ways can a committee of five people be chosen if there are ten men available, seven women available, and we require at least 
four men on the committee. You notice how I put the, those words at least in bold? That's because I wanted that clue to jump out at you. At least tells us that we have options. It's possible that we could have four men on the committee or we could have more. We could have five men be on the committee. Whenever you encounter a word like this, this or, that means addition. It's going to be two problems where you have to add the answers together. If we are considering the component where we're looking at only four men, that's like what we were just doing. From the ten men, we're going to pick four of them. But how many women does that mean there are on the committee? Well, since there are five on the committee, if four of them are men, that would leave one woman to be on the committee. Well, that tells us seven women are available. We're choosing one of them. This piece that we have in blue is for the option when there are four men. Exact same type of problem that we just did. I'm going to go over to the calculator, type it in. We'll get our answer to that part. So, 10 choose 4 multiplied by 7 choose 1. And when we multiply it out, we get 1,470. This piece is telling us if we require that there are exactly four men on this committee, there are 1,470 ways to do that with exactly four men. But when we had this word at least, there was <coughs> also the option that there could be five men. So if we require five men on the committee, and this one I'm going to do in purple, how is it different from what we did before? Well, there are still 10 men available. This time we're picking five. There are still seven women available, but how many are getting picked? None of them. Because although there were five people, for this part in the purple, all five of them are guys. Well, we can still type that piece into the calculator as well. That will give us 10 choose 5 multiplied by 7 choose 0. Hit equals 252. If we require that all of them on the committee be men, there are 252 ways. This is finally where this word or comes into play. Or means add. First option or second option means combine the two together. So to get the final answer for the or, we'll just add those two together. 0 plus 2, 7 plus 2 is 5, I'm sorry, 7 plus 2. 7 plus 5 is 12, carries over the 1, and we get our final answer, 1,722. You notice how this is not a problem that's about just press buttons on the calculator? That learning objective that we had about understanding the mathematical implications of and and or is a huge part of this. If you are not able to recognize the words and and or in the problems, it's going to create issues. Especially because they don't always use the word and and or. We'd seen in this one that they never said four men or five men. They said at least. Using this vocabulary, this terminology, 
you have to recognize the options of four men or five men. And this example, same type. Pause the video, try it out. So for this problem, the two important characteristics to recognize, it's a committee, which means it's a combination. Also, you need to recognize at most. At most one man means we have two options. That there are zero men or that there is one man. Well, the or in this situation is going to tell us we have to add up the two answers. Well, I'm going to choose to go from left to right, starting off and saying, if there are zero men, there's four to pick from, the order is not important for combinations, no men are on the committee. That would mean, from the six women that are available, we're still picking them, and four of them get chosen. When we use the calculator for that part, it's going to tell us the answer for only this option where there are zero men. Let's use the calculator to get that part. Four choose zero, multiplied by six choose four. Four comma zero, multiplied by six choose four. With them typed in, we can hit equals, and it turns out that there are 15 ways to pick no men for the committee. We still need to go through and consider the option when there is one man on the committee. Well, there are still four to choose from, but we're picking one. Still six women available, but if one of them is a guy, how many women are on the committee? And so we've got that part set up. We'll go back into the calculator. 4 choose 1 multiplied by 6 choose 3. 4 choose 1. Oh. 1 multiplied by 6 choose 3. Hit equals. And we have 80. This one gives us, there are 80 different ways to pick the committee consisting of one man and three women. To finish this off, we still have our or. Or tells us to add. How many options do we have? There we go. There are 95 different committees you could create that will have at most one man given these situations, this, this scenario. And the last one we'll look at delves into politics. In the United States, the two major political parties are Democrats and Republicans. Each political party is responsible for nominating both a president and a vice president candidate. The candidate will participate in a debate after they are chosen. Suppose that there are six Democratic candidates available and seven Republican candidates available. How many different debate combinations are possible? let's start with this piece that we have to always look at. Is this a combination or a permutation problem? Does the order in which people get picked matter? Okay, Sophie, you're saying yes, it matters. Why does it matter? Okay, you are correct. We are going to have a piece split up where we're going to say, Here's our problem where we're choosing Democrats. Here's our problem where we're choosing Republicans. But does it matter if it's a first Republican and second Republican or first Democrat and second, Repub second Democrat? 
In this problem, yes, it does. This is actually a kind of a trick, tricky problem because it uses this word combinations. And as soon as you see the word combination, a lot of people instantly say, well, order doesn't matter because they're using that word. It's actually not true like that because when they're, they're using the word combination to mean different groupings, this is like an English version of combination, not the math version of combination. So this word here is actually kind of leading you astray. The important observation is to note right here, you need a president and a vice president. If you are one of the people running, does it matter to you if you get picked as president or vice president? Yes. Or do you just care that, hey, I got picked as one of them? Most people are going to say, yes, it's important. I want to be the president. That's better than the vice president. The first nomination goes to the president. After the president has been picked for the nomination, then they pick the vice president. So yes, there is an order to this. The vice president is picked second. The president is picked first. Recognizing that there is an order to this, that's how we would need to recognize it's a permutation problem. There are six Democrats, and we're going to pick two of them, but which one is picked for president and which one is picked for vice president is important. Well, let's get that part right there. Six permute two. Going over to my calculator. Permutations, six comma two. And we would get 30 different ways that they could pick what they would call the democratic ticket. We have the same type of issue with the Republicans, though. There are seven Republicans to pick from, and there are two that have got to get picked. We can go use the calculator. Permutations, 7, 2. And we get an answer of 42. 42 different ways that we could wind up with the Republican ticket. To finish this problem, we have to figure out, is this an AND problem, or is this an OR problem? We know AND will tell us to multiply these numbers, OR will tell us to add the numbers. Are we supposed to multiply, or, or are we supposed to add? For that one, you needed to recognize here. Uh, where I'm missing where I saw it. There we go. This is the important one. Because it's Democrats and Republicans. Purple is handling the Democrats. Yellow is handling the Republicans. That's what tells us we have to multiply these numbers 30 times 42 to get our final answer. So if we take 30 times 42, we'd get 1,260, and we're finished up. This problem is an excellent representation for the two learning objectives we had. When you were looking at the problem, you had to stop and figure out, was the order important? Was it a combination or a permutation problem? We also had to look and figure out, was this an AND or an OR problem? AND problems tell us to multiply, OR problems tell us to add. By combining our two learning objectives, we were able to create a problem that accurately or efficiently checks to see whether you know how to handle a mixed, a mixed combination and 
next combination and permutation problem.